Welcome to the New Chemist. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Here on the New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as careers, community, research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. My guest this afternoon is Dr. Sheena Antonio Colley, the Chief Medical Officer of the Doctors' Hospital in the Bahamas. Thanks for joining me today. It is good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. Dr. Sheena Antonio Colley is an accomplished physician and scholar. She has achieved numerous degrees, namely a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Chemistry from Taylor University and a medical degree from St. George's University. She completed her internal medicine residency, is board certified by the American Board of Internal Medicine, and is a certified physician executive by the American Association of Physician Leaders. She currently serves as the Chief Medical Officer of Doctors Hospital. Please welcome Dr. Sheena Antonio Colley. Thank you, Dr. Colley, for joining me today. It is good to see you. Thank you, David, for having me. It's good to be with you today. Yes. So what have been your longstanding interests in the field of science? Well, so since a young age, I wanted to become a doctor. And I knew early on that to do that, I had to develop an interest in science. When I started in primary school, it became a natural thing for me. And um, so I just love science. Science to me um, basically provides a path to solutions. And so um, for me, I'm solution oriented. I always like to say, I'm sure you can bring me a problem, but make sure it's accompanied by a solution. So it, teach, it seeks to teach or inform us of how things work. And you know, human progress throughout uh, history has largely been as a result of scientific advancement. So indeed, um, science has been sort of a part of me since a very, very young age. And the, a lot of the way I even live my life is, is a lot like science. And so indeed, um, and that is to be solution oriented. Okay, that's good. So how have you been adaptive or creative in the field of science? Where do you, where would you say that has been the case? So, you know, one of the things um, that I love is that you uh, describe chemistry as the science of change, um, because indeed change is the only constant in our lives. So, you know, we live in a fast changing world vis-a-vis -vis COVID and all the changes that occurs that have been occurring with COVID. I mean, just in terms of the way we have to live our lives, what people call the new norm. So we have to be able to adapt to or get used to uh, change, quote unquote. And to do this, especially as scientists, we must, we have to keep an open mind, first of all, um, and we have to know that there are many ways to achieve our goals, all right? So there's, there's more than one way to get to where we want to go. So some people think, oh, you know, to, do, to become a doctor, I have to do this or I have to do that. And, you know, indeed, we have to be able to adapt to what's changing around us, changing criteria, the way people live, the way our outlook is on life, I think we have to be adaptive. So, so that's very important to me as well. Uh, that's good. So what have been some of your most effective and impactful ideas to date? What, if you had to give a summation or if you had to give a few of your impactful ideas, even oh, as, wow. you know, what, what would you say has been most impactful? So first of all, just to let you know that 
anything that I've done that has been impactful or effective, you know, it has really been because of my outlook, my upbringing, um, and my foundation, which is a foundation based on my relationship with God. And so indeed, um, in terms of some of the um, things that I consider to be important um, achievements or milestones or impact that, that would cause impact in other people's lives has been things like, um, so first of all, um, just when I decided to make the move to return to the Bahamas to uh, live here, to become a doctor, um, to really be, um, to be of use to uh, my country. Um, I think that that was something that I, I felt was a good decision and hopefully had a great impact. Um, also to, um, just in what I'm doing right now, um, I'm the chief medical officer at Doctors Hospital, and we are doing a lot in um, this fight and this pandemic. It's a very humbling experience to be able to affect change and to be able to know that some of the changes that we're making and some of the things that we are doing indeed is being helpful in terms of mitigating against some of the uh, awful effects of this COVID-19 disease and the coronavirus. So, so for me, just my life in terms of my work uh, is for me very impactful for me because it's humbling to be in this position. I'm a member of the Emergency Operations Committee for the uh, country, the National Committee. And that group of people is also doing an awesome job in, in terms of keeping our country safe. So those are just a few of the things that I could say. Okay, that's good. That's very good. Um, also, um, why, uh, why did you choose medicine as a field to do your doctoral studies in? Why did you choose medicine to do? Why, why, why medicine? Medicine chose me. Okay, okay, that's good. That's Medicine good. Medicine chose me because indeed, um, uh, when I was um, six years old, I went to the doctor. I grew up in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Okay. And um, I was a student at the Lewis Yard Primary School. Okay. And I went to the the, uh, what was at the time, the Antoni Clinic. And um, at the time, at that time, in that uh, just post-independence, there was still a lot of expatriate um, workers in the country. So I saw a female doctor. Okay. And was a Caucasian female doctor. And I was very impressed. She took very good care of me. She was my doctor for a number of years. And um, I decided at that time that I'm going to be what I thought at the time was the first Bahamian, Black Bahamian female doctor. Well, nobody told me that there were a couple before me. So, and thankfully that there were a few before me uh, that did um, blaze the trail to allow me to get to this point. And then as I went, as I moved towards that field, it became um, a passion for me. It became more of a passion than a profession. And um, like I said, it shows me. Okay, that's good. That's very good. It's very interesting. So how do you maintain the view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? How do you maintain view of that? Well, the big even picture. Amidst, even amidst challenges and obstacles, how do you maintain view of that? So that's not always easy. Um, as a physician, it's very easy to be very detailed oriented, which is a good thing. It's the ability to envision, all right? And it's the ability to envision even when there are obstacles that you see opportunities, even when you envision when there are obstacles. And so it's, it's, it's a way of looking at the broader scope to looking at, at the way things ought to work 
oh, yeah. um, and really um, envisioning the path that you need to take to get to the goal that you have. So this is why, um, uh, especially as somebody who's interested in being a leader, that it's very important to be able to see the big picture. Um, and to keep that perspective is to just stay focused and stay on the path that you need to stay on. Okay, that's good. That's very good. So uh, moving right along, how have you sought or found the right environment for you to thrive scientifically and intellectually? How did you find it? Well, I think that you have to many, many times create that environment for yourself. Okay. Because it is not always going to just come to you. Okay. Sometimes you get thrown into a situation that you did not plan for. But even in that situation, it is important for you to be able to thrive. And um, being able to create the environment that works for you, that um, is an environment that will help you to grow, all right, will give you all the nourishment that you need. Many times we're, we're tasked to create that for ourselves. Wow, that's powerful. That's very good. So how do you, given all your responsibilities and accomplishments, how have you maintained or how do you maintain a balanced life? Well, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the magician in me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so essentially, you know, work-life balance is always an interesting a phenomenon. And, and it's different for every person, I think. But for me, to have a foundation and to have a ground thing is what allows me to be able to balance my life. And as I told you, my foundation and my grounding is my relationship with God. And that has allowed me to be able to then from there be able to prioritize things in my life uh, in, a, in, a, in a broad way. It's been able to show me, as you spoke about, the bigger picture. And that allows me to be able to then try to strike a balance. Maybe it doesn't work every single day. Sometimes there are things that take um, priority over what I thought should be my priority. But to be guided by, by the guidance that I get from that um, relationship with God uh, is important for me. And that's what helps me and helps me to know when it is that I'm getting out of sync as well. Okay, that's good. That's good. So also, how have you maintained vision and teamwork in your environment? How have you done that? Well, that's um, also... Um, could be tricky at times because you're working with different individuals everybody has a different personality but when we're talking about teamwork and um, when you're talking about people working together the important thing is that we have the same goal and like I said before maybe yes there may be different ways to get to those goals but once we're on the same path and we have that same vision in mind. So the vision is one vision and the paths can be a little bit divergent, but we always need to converge on a path that takes us to exactly where we're, where we're all going together. Also too, to create a culture um, in, in, in the team or in the people that you lead, creating a culture that would foster individuality Okay. but yet cohesiveness. And okay. that could be, once again, a balancing act. And the way you overcome that is by definitely allowing everybody to be able to show their talents, to be able to use their talents in an effective way. Um, but once again, maintaining our eye on the prize. Okay, that's good. So as we, as we conclude, I have a question. What keeps you optimistic in your fight against COVID-19? What keeps you optimistic? Once again, um, it is my relationship with God, definitely, because I know he is the one who is in charge of this fight. 
And then also to the people that we serve and the way they uh, are responding and the, 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 what we see happening, the improvement in the numbers that we may not be seeing right this minute in the Bahamas, but we know that it is coming. Um, and the fact that we know that, that, you know, in the end, once we are once again all on one accord and we have the same goal, I know that we are going to overcome this. That's good. That's good. Thank you so much, Dr. Colley. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, David. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is The New Chemist, where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences, careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I. Thank you.